Hola friends, hola amigos, como están? How are you all? I am Nikki of Nikki Bannister Language Coaching and I am here to share with you in this video, first of all, a very, very exciting new project that I have had on my heart for almost two years now since I opened my business that I am now working to bring to a reality. This is going to be a dual podcast and video YouTube series called Your Best Bilingual Life. And it's all about sharing people's experiences with language and with being bilingual, learning to become bilingual, wanting to become bilingual, and how language has impacted and changed their lives. It's an inner, it's a conversational interview series with all different people, my friends, my family, my students, and all sorts of new acquaintances that I meet along the way. So I will be hosting conversational interviews with a whole variety of people and language learners and speakers. And I want to start today by sharing with you all my story and part of my experience, and I'll be sharing it in pieces through these videos this week to start this project. I am already working and interviewing with people for this new series, Your Best Bilingual Life. And if you are interested and would like to be a part of it, by all means, let me know, leave me a comment, shoot me a message, and I would love to talk to you. I will have a brief application that I'll leave in the comments for you as well. And I can't wait to bring this to everyone in my audience for your viewing. I hope that these stories will inspire you and help you to realize that no two language journeys are the same and that everyone can go on one and that this will inspire you and help you to live your best bilingual life. So I'm going to start today with sharing how I became fluent in my second language, which is Spanish. And this might be really interesting for some of you, especially that have known me since before I was bilingual, since before I had any of these language skills, because you might still be scratching your head about what I'm doing over here with Nikki Bannister Language Coaching and why I'm a language coach. So hopefully I can clear that up for you today. I wanna to talk about how I learned my second language, Spanish, and became fluent. So. Let me preface by saying that I started with no Spanish knowledge whatsoever. And I mean less than most people that I talk to by the time that they're adults that have grown up here and grown up in California. I went through school and yes, it's a requirement in our school system to take a second language, at least two years typically in high school if you're college bound. And I didn't avoid that. I did take a second language, but I never took a verbal second language. In fact, my first second language was sign language. I took college classes while I was in high school and so I fulfilled my high school requirement and I fulfilled my college requirement at the same time and I had no need to take any more language classes and I'm also going to tell you that everyone that I knew, all of my friends took Spanish and they took French in high school which were our two options to take a class on campus and I didn't want to be like everyone else. I was a high schooler, right? And I wanted to be different and I wanted to be unique. And so learning Spanish and learning French at that time simply did not appeal to me because everyone else was doing it. <laughs> and I wanted to be unique. So I avoided language learning, any verbal language learning, all the way through high school and all the way through college. I did not take a single class. The most that I did is my dad came home one time when I was in junior high school and having a household PC computer was still a new thing and he got some sort of like DVD Spanish learning program and I can't remember what it was called and I would go on just to play the games that were on that program and I still remember from that program, ¿Cuál es el propósito de su viaje? What is the purpose of your trip? And unless you said it in that same tone of voice that the guy on the computer did, it didn't register it as correct. So that's about the, the extent of my Spanish and verbal second language skills 
all the way through college. So I was a full-fledged adult before I took my first language class. And I took it by mistake. Not entirely by mistake, but sort of a, a general happenstance. I graduated college in December of 2008, and it was the height of the recession. It was really hard to find a job. It was really hard to get started and kind of get my feet under myself in life. And, and I had just gone through a big breakup. And so my life was just kind of starting over in a lot of ways. And I didn't know what to do. And at that time, I, as a 21 year old, had access to healthcare benefits as long as I was a half-time student or more. That was the stipulation. So I ended up signing up for two elective classes at my local junior college after I had graduated with my bachelor's degree just so that I could keep my health benefits and take one more stressful thing off my plate while I was figuring out what to do with my life. And those two classes that I signed up for were Spanish, conversational Spanish, and Italian 1A, the first course of Italian. I just signed up because I thought they might be fun and, and different, and they were. Now, what also happened in my life around that time at the beginning of 2009, so 10 years ago, is that I took my first real international trip where I got off of the continent and I was able to really immerse myself in a different culture. And what happened is that the little bit of language that I had had that semester in both Spanish and Italian, which the classes were fun, I enjoyed them, I then went to Israel. And Israel is a place that has all different languages spoken in it. There are tourists from everywhere. And I would walk across that open plaza in front of the Temple Mount and I just heard Italian that I recognized and I heard Spanish and people walking past me and it felt like clues. It felt like I was unwrapping clues that just, then I could decipher, you know, like if there was a seek, I had the secret code and I could understand it. And of course I was also inspired by all the other languages I heard that I didn't recognize. And so my mind was pretty much made up then. And that was the moment for me that it clicked, that I realized that knowing a second language is like having the key that unlocks and opens the door to a whole other world. And it just doubles the size of your current world and your current reality. It doubles possibility, it doubles friendships, it doubles so much, it doubles your just experience and fulfillment and connection. And language was the key that opened that door. So I took my first classes, I traveled internationally for the first time, and I was hooked but I was still kind of trying to figure out what to do with my life. So over that next year, I ended up taking Italian one again because I didn't pass the first time. And I ended up mostly because I missed the final while I was in Israel. But I also took Spanish one instead of conversational Spanish. And what I found in that first year, being totally new in both languages with no experience whatsoever, is that they were really similar and I didn't feel like I was clearly developing or making progress in either. I felt like I kept crossing paths between both Spanish and Italian and I knew that I needed to decide. I knew that I needed to say, okay, I'm gonna commit to one language and I even took it further. I said, you know what? I'm just gonna figure out what it takes to master a second language and then I'll, you know, and I'll, I'll accomplish that with one language and then I'll just repeat the process with other languages. Así de fácil, easy peasy. Well, along the way I did discover that that feeling of having mastered another language may never actually come. However, I did learn a whole lot of useful things. So between Italian and Spanish, I really loved how beautiful Italian was, but Spanish was just undeniable for me because where I live, my community is filled with Spanish speakers. I have Spanish speakers in my family. And as I was also interested in travel, to my logic, I looked at the world and how many different countries are Spanish speaking 
versus how many different countries are Italian speaking. And I thought, hey, this is gonna cover a lot more ground and it hits closer to home if I start with Spanish. So I decided to commit to the Spanish and leave Italian for later. Funny thing, French has actually taken the place of Italian in the meantime. However, I decided I wanted to stick with Spanish and so I wanted to dive in. So, <laughs> I had to make notes to make sure I map this out correctly. I made my decision in 2010, in 2010, that I was going to master Spanish. And I got work, I started working, and I had a job in special education in the field of education. So I was on a school year calendar and I had summers free. So after taking Spanish one, I went to Ecuador for the summer in between school years and I enrolled in a TESOL program, which is a certification program to teach English as a second language. So teaching English to speakers of other languages, I enrolled in a master's TESOL program in Ecuador in the summer of 2010 and I went and while I was there, I continued studying Spanish. I had a week of classes before my TESOL program began. And other than that, my practice just consisted of living with a host family and living in a country that spoke Spanish. So it wasn't very rigid, wasn't very structured, but it was very experiential and very relationship based. And it was a wonderful, wonderful summer and I love Ecuador and highly recommend it. And I'm so glad I went and I'm still friends with people that I met there that summer and I haven't gone back yet, but I cannot wait to. I also had a special connection to Ecuador because my sister-in-law is actually Ecuadorian and from there. And so I felt like I was connecting a little more with family while I was there too. I was very tempted to stay, but I came back to my job at the end of the summer and I ended up teaching, uh, working in special education for another year. And then that next summer, I decided I wanted to advance my Spanish skills further. And I enrolled in an immersion program. But this immersion program, it's through Middlebury Language Schools and it was actually based in California. So I didn't leave the country, but I enrolled in a nine week immersion program where you take a language pledge that you will only communicate in your target language. You will not hear, speak, read, see anything in English or any other language. You will focus exclusively on your target language. As a teacher, I now have mixed feelings about that. However, that's the program I signed up for. And I cheated on the entrance exam because again, my logic is I wanna master a second language as quickly as possible and move on to the next one. So I cheated on the entrance exam. First time I'm admitting this publicly, by the way. I cheated on the entrance exam so that I would be placed at a higher level because to my thinking, if I went in at a beginning level, I would only come out at a you know higher beginning level. But if I could go in at like an intermediate level, I could come out at an almost advanced level. So of course, I cheat on the entrance exam, I get into the program, and I'm completely lost and I cry a lot that summer. <laughs> I also had an amazing time. I discovered yoga for the first time in Spanish. I also discovered Zumba, put on performances, and again, met amazing friends. But it was a very frustrating experience to not ever have a break from the Spanish and again, to be at a level where I really felt lost almost all the time. One of the most frustrating things was not being able to express myself. Like I would be super frustrated and crying and I couldn't even explain why I was crying because I didn't have the vocabulary to do so and I wasn't allowed to speak anything but Spanish. So I would just cry and not be able to explain why. I had very nice teachers. Thank you, Nale. Uh, that was my immersion program. And then I went back uh, to working in the schools and I ended up taking a tr one more traditional class, and that was my last ever real traditional class, uh, and I took Spanish 4 after that, which was the most advanced class that was offered at my junior college. So I had maxed out on traditional classes, and, and I enjoyed the class, but again, while I could understand the vocabulary and pass the test, it didn't actually translate to how fluent I felt like I was in real life. So I was committed so despite all these uncomfortable situations, I decided that I was going to keep putting myself in situations where I felt 
uncomfortable where I felt like a fish out of water and like I was in over my head and quite frankly where I felt unqualified and I was going to keep putting myself in positions where I would be forced to continue using and learning my Spanish. So that next year, I actually started teaching high school Spanish and I was very confident in my teaching skills, but not as confident in my Spanish skills. And I had a, a conversational test and I couldn't believe that I passed, but somehow I did. And so I taught Spanish that year and had an amazing teaching experience, but one that left me, um, well, I'll leave, that for, I'll leave that for later. I had an amazing teaching year and it had really been on my heart to go to Argentina. Argentina was the next country that I wanted to go to in part because when I had been in Ecuador previously, people would tell me, you know, if you were gonna like fit in in any Spanish speaking country, like if you were gonna maybe look, like not stand out like a tourist, but look like you belonged, it might be Argentina. We might think you were from Argentina. And that really appealed to me. I thought, oh great, I wanna go somewhere where it's not like super obvious that I'm a gringa, but I wanna go somewhere where maybe I can blend in. And so it had been on my heart to go to Argentina and I had decided and planned to go over that summer. Again, being a teacher, I had summers and I found a program. I was, it was better for me financially to be able to have a educational purpose for my travel. So I found a program with the University of Belgrano in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I went to study Spanish language and culture. And again, really wasn't sure. I just finished my first year teaching high school Spanish, and it was a really great moment for me because they again gave us a placement test, but not one we could cheat on. This one was in person. And, oh, hermana, hi, Corey. So I'm in Argentina, and it's the very beginning of this program, and I take the placement test, and I get called to the side along with three other girls, and we're all standing there, and we don't know what we did, but we're pretty sure we're in trouble, and we end up having a teacher come and say, hey, you guys have actually scored so high on the test. You're at the perfection level. Not that we were perfect, that was just the name of the level. And a more advanced level of Spanish than they typically offered. So they decided to open a class just for us and our group so that we could be together in a class at a higher level. And that was a really good affirming moment for me because again, I was never really sure where my Spanish skills were, even after teaching high school Spanish. So, I start this program in Buenos Aires, and during the summer here in California, it's winter in Buenos Aires, and it's a big city, and it's cold, and I was sick most of the time, and it turned out that I was really, really burnt out from my first year teaching, and I kind of spiraled. It was really tough. I wasn't having this beautiful traveling experience. I was really dealing with some internal stuff and what I was gonna do. And I knew I needed a break and I knew I needed a different focus on my career. So I ended up deciding that I couldn't continue with my high school teaching job and I got back and I, again, with the intention of taking my Spanish skills as far as I could, of continuing to put myself in uncomfortable situations where I would use my language skills, where I would use my Spanish, I came back and I started job searching and I started job searching almost exclusively for bilingual jobs. And for a period of time, I worked for a small Spanish school that taught children privately and it really inspired me with what was possible with an all Spanish position and it was all Spanish. So we spoke, I offered direct support to the two owners and we spoke only Spanish between us and we spoke only Spanish in the office. And again, I, I felt really uncomfortable. I felt like I, I, I wasn't good enough to do that. And it was the first interview that I conducted entirely in Spanish and that had me nervous but I got the job. So some, there was that affirmation for my Spanish again. I worked there for a few months and it was part-time and I ended up finding full-time work a few months later, working in a local government position as a bilingual worker. Now I had applied for the bilingual position and for the monolingual position in this job and I didn't get the call back for the monolingual position. I wasn't high up, on, high up enough on the list of applicants who had applied within the first, you know, whatever, first 100 applicants. 
and I my only shot was with the bilingual position so the pressure was on I went through the interview and was offered the job on the condition that I pass the Spanish language test to be a bilingual worker and I was still so nervous I was still so unsure if my Spanish was good enough and if I could use it and even worse for me the test turned out to be over the phone and I happen to think that speaking to someone over the phone is harder than speaking face to face because you can use so many more gestures like you can see that I do and you can read facial expressions but everything over the phone is just based on what you hear and the language. So I was nervous and I didn't know right away if I passed. I had to wait for a letter to come in the mail and yep, I passed. So I worked in a bilingual position and in my job, I got so nervous before I had to call clients in Spanish on the phone at first and I got so nervous before interviews but I continued practicing and what was really useful about that job is that so much of what we did was repetitive. So much of what I said was repetitive that I developed a, a sort of spiel and it became really easy to have the same conversation over and over again in Spanish, even though it was pretty specific to certain things that I don't talk about anymore in my daily life, but I developed this spiel and it became very comfortable. And it was a great way to practice and work and talk with people from all different economic levels and countries and Spanish speaking backgrounds. So I ended up leaving that job, not satisfied with the work that I was doing and with the direction my life was headed, really happy with the money, but other than that, didn't feel like it was fulfilling my soul's purpose to stay there, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I went back to teaching at the high school level and for a variety of reasons, that ended up not working out for me again. But again, as I worked through getting to that position, I took more tests. I had to pass all of the, the state teaching credential tests to be a Spanish speaker and be a Spanish teacher. And I passed them all. And I really wasn't sure if I was going to. I was still not sure of my language skills or how good I was. And pass all the tests, teach, and it was through that teaching job that I had a wonderful mentor teacher and I ended up discovering a whole new way of teaching that my current business and language coaching is completely based off of the inspiration from that. So I am so blessed for all these kind of accidental things, wanting to keep my health benefits, that work together to form a career and led me to being fluent in a second language is that I was able to go from absolutely nothing in my background to a very high level of proficiency in two years. Within two years of starting to learn Spanish, I was teaching high school Spanish. However, that did not mean that I was confident in using my skills or with what I was doing. So I passed tests but I struggled all the time with feeling, with lacking confidence and with feeling not sure of myself and with sometimes it would keep me from speaking up and keep me from doing things because I would try to avoid a situation that I wasn't very comfortable in. Now, my main focus with my students is to help them build their confidence at the same time as they build their language skills so that at every level of language skill that they have, they can use it freely and happily. But that's kind of for a different video. So two years ago, at the beginning of January of 2018, I started my own business that is now Nikki Bannister Language Coaching and I started working primarily with adults and the main way that I continue to build my own language skills now in my second language of Spanish is through reading, which I do a lot at the advanced level with my advanced students in my El Club de Libros, intermediate advanced Spanish class and reading definitely benefits me and I do a lot of personal reading in Spanish as well. And it's also through, sorry, I wrote these down. It's also through 
um, the personal travel that I'm able to do and all the opportunities that I find to interact with people in Spanish. I will basically seize any opportunity that I can to make a connection, build a relationship in Spanish. I have some beautiful friends and family members that are willing to speak Spanish with me, even though their English is also wonderful, just to allow me the opportunity to continue having experiences and conversations here. And of course, every time I travel, I seek it out as much as I can. Um, have done a bit of scuba diving and like to go to Spanish speaking destinations for that, so that I can continue to practice as much as I can wherever I can. So, at no point along this journey have I actually felt like I have mastered Spanish as a second language. And I will say that even most teachers also, most language teachers will feel me on this, that we're not super comfortable with the term fluent either because fluent really isn't defined. But I believe what most people mean when they say they want to be fluent in another language is that they want to have an advanced level of proficiency and they want to be able to use it confidently. And I've been able to do that for a few years now. And it's a huge gift, but at the same time, I'm very aware that this is a practice and it's a lifelong journey. I will be continuing to improve and use and learn my Spanish for the rest of my life. However, this year I did also feel comfortable. I felt comfortable last year, but I didn't have the opportunity. I felt comfortable this year to start my next language journey separate from Spanish. And I've started a new French language journey this year with a wonderful teacher. And I am still a beginner, just a beginner in that, but it is nothing but an enjoyable and fun process because I am actually not repeating the process that I made for myself with my second language Spanish. I am now subscribing to a whole new process that I know is much more fun, much more enjoyable, and much more effective with my third language French. So, any questions for me? Any questions, and feel free, if you're catching this later, feel free to leave questions in the comments for me to let me know what else you'd like to know. I, that was pretty exhaustive, but what else are you curious about, about what it looks like to learn a second language, what it looks like to learn a second language as an adult, what it looks like to start, to go from nothing, how quickly you can reach fluency, what fluency means, all those things. What do you want to know? Let me know. I'll be happy to add more and I will be continuing to share more about my experience and how language learning has changed my life and all these things in a couple more live videos this week that will then be available. And again, if you're interested in being a part of this, of this project of sharing language stories and bilingual language stories and experiences to inspire and help people to live their best bilingual lives, then please let me know, reach out. I'll leave that application in the comments and you can look forward to that podcast and YouTube series becoming available. It is called Your Best Bilingual Life and you can look forward to that becoming available in the new year in 2020. So thank you so much for watching with me. Let me know if you have any comments or questions and I will see you in the next video soon. Bye.